This is the walkthrough video um, for my 2011 Tioga Rangers. I have two of them. Um, this one is considered number seven. Um, the number eight that I have um, is pretty much identical. The only thing that is different is the number eight does not have an awning anymore. And the interior of the number eight is also gray. But for the purposes of the walkthrough video, everything else will be the same. So I'm only going to make the one video for the two. If you have any questions after watching the video, please feel free to contact me anytime to ask questions. So we're going to go over the outside of this thing first. And uh, we're just going to go through everything that's on the outside and uh, work our way through to the inside and then end with the awning. So here we go. So this right here is the uh, access compartment for the hot water heater. When you have it turned on and running, you will notice hot air coming out of here. That is perfectly normal, but this does get hot. So you do not want to get in the habit of touching it. So um, this compartment right below it here. This is where you'll find the propane tank and a manual propane gauge. Most of these will only get up to three quarters on the gauge. Um, so when you return them and they only get up to three quarters, I'm not gonna charge you for extra fuel or anything. I know that's the full. You'll also find up here the rod for running the awning, which we will cover later. This next compartment over here, is just a storage compartment. Most people put their boots or firewood inside here. You'll also find that it uh, has an upper compartment that goes all the way across the RV. This works good for fishing poles or skis or snowboards. It's also accessible from the other side. This right here is your outdoor electrical hookup for when you have the generator running and you have something you want to plug in. This guy here is the output for the refrigerator. Uh, the refrigerator does run on propane, so you will also notice that this will put out heat as well. Um, below it here, you have the furnace output that definitely puts out heat, enough so that they mentioned it. So wanna watch out for that guy. Down here, in this storage compartment behind the, the wheels is where you'll find the freshwater hose hookup. Well, just the hose, actually. Uh, the hookup for uh, filling up your fresh water is actually located here. Let me get that open for you guys so you can see what that looks like. There's the cap for it. You take the cap off, and uh, there you go. So this is your storage tank for your water. When you're filling this up and you have the hose inside of here, this is something that you have to watch. Um, if it uh, pressurizes a system, it can blow the fill hose off. Um, and in extreme situations, it can actually rupture the, uh, the storage tank itself, which is expensive and quite messy. So um, when you're doing that, there is a gauge on the inside of the camper that you can watch the fresh water level go up on. When that gets to the full mark, I typically would walk out here and then wait to hear the gurgling noise and you start to hear or see a little bit of mist or some water coming out of this vent hose right here. And as soon as you see that, it's full. You can go ahead and disconnect your hose and shut the hose off. This next compartment over here is the access to your rear storage. This is where the bulk of your storage would wind up. We get a little messy back here, I apologize for that, but we do have some camping chairs back here and a uh, leveling ramp, which is gonna get replaced with leveling blocks. You also have a light switch up here to help you see if it's dark out, which doesn't really happen too much in the summer. And uh, located 
around the corner here, you'll see a key lock box with the code 2007. That is the lock box for the camper. And uh, that's really just for whenever you want to hide keys in there so that you can have other people get into the camper if you're not around. Sometimes if I'm unable to meet you when you're returning the motorhome, I'll have you leave the keys there. You got your spare tire. These do have a ladder on them, um, but unless it's an emergency, please don't use them. Um, the roofs on these things are just a thin rubber membrane, and if there's a rock in your shoe, it'll leave a bunch of holes in the rubber membrane, which would cause leaks. And uh, the membrane replacement is is quite expensive. It's about uh, a five to eight thousand dollar replacement. So avoid going on the roofs at all times, unless it's an emergency. Right here. If you want to watch cable TV and the place you're parking has a hookup, you can plug in here. The Sane T flush um, is for cleaning out the black tank. That is something you guys do not have to do. Um, you need to empty it, but, uh, but you don't have to flush it. If you're at a campground where they have a water source that you can hook up to the motorhome while you're camped, um, you can hook the hose up here. And when you shut the water pump off inside the camper, instead of using your storage tank for water, it'll just use the hose water and the hose pressure as well. So that is really handy. Below here, and this is actually a pretty important part, this is where your, uh, this is where your electrical cable is for hooking up the motorhome to electric. And uh, I'm gonna show you on the inside here. There's this electrical box with a cord plugged into it. If you want the generator to work, this cord does have to be plugged into this outlet. If it is unplugged, it is like the generator is not plugged into the motorhome and you can run it all day long and have no power. This is the most common issue if you are running the generator and do not have any 120 volt power. If you're at a campground that has an electrical hookup, you can unplug it. And there's a long cord on here and it's got the, uh, the high amp plug in there if your campground has it. If it does not have it, then inside this compartment as well, you will find the adapter. Okay, so you can just plug the adapter in and have your regular plug in. When you're done, simply bring it back out here and uh, plug that guy back in just like that. And uh, when you get ready to use your generator again, you'll have power ready to go. Your next compartment here, this is the fun one, and I apologize for this part of using a motorhome to anybody that doesn't like this sort of thing. I don't know anybody that does, so. Uh, this is the waste station, okay? Um, this is where you would take care of dumping all of your waste tanks. So, you'll notice that there are two different valves. There's this large one here, and a smaller one here. Um, the large one, is the one you need to do first. So what you would do is you would put gloves on first, unscrew this cap right here that goes through the bottom. You would run this hose to the dump station, up through the bottom of this compartment into this guy here. You take this cap off, you just twist it to the left, locks on just like this other part does right here. This would lock on there right there and snap it in. Once it's hooked up and secure, you pull this valve straight out and that's gonna dump everything that went through your toilet. So that is the worst part of it. So once you notice that stopping, and you'll definitely notice the difference when it's done, you shove the handle back in, it closes. You switch over to this little one right here and do the same thing, you pull that out. That's gonna take all the, all the drain from your shower and from your sink and basically anything that's not going through the toilet. Um, and what that does is it uh, not only dumps your tank, but it also rinses everything out, so it's not really nasty. Um, again, wear gloves for this. Um, we are trying to make sure that there's always gloves stocked in the motorhomes. 
if for whatever reason you do not have gloves and you do need to purchase gloves, I will reimburse you for doing so. Right here, we have the outdoor shower. And this is kind of handy for rinsing off boots after hiking or rinsing off kids. Or if you are fishing to clean off fish, um, as that is something that has to be done on the outside of the camper here. So you simply uncoil your hose here. Sorry for the camera there being out of frame. Uh, pull the shower head out and uh, it's just like a regular shower at that point. You just turn the hot water on or the cold water on and it works just like normal. Just like the shower inside too, you also have a temporary shutoff switch right here to conserve water and to resume. So it's a good way to save water. Regular unleaded fuel. You might as well put the cheapest thing you can find in here because it doesn't really make any difference if you put anything nicer. Um, just costs more money if you do. So um, this is the other side of those storage compartments that go across the uh, whole camper here. Same deal, big open compartment with a uh, part that goes across the top. We have two of those guys here. This compartment here that's on the slide out is kind of nice. That one actually got locked, so let me get that open for you. kind of a storage compartment that actually goes, uh, it's basically on the underside of the bench from the kitchen table. Um, and I'll show you how to get to that from the inside as well, but you can see it better here. That's the curtain that goes across the cab of the, the motorhome to block out the light. So that's accessible from the inside of the camper. And I'll show you how to do that when we get in there. This last compartment here on the outside is the generator. I'm going to show it to you, but the generator is controlled from the inside, so shouldn't have to open this compartment. There's your generator. It can be opened. And you can see where the oil fill is. Generators on motorhomes are really nice. If they run low on oil, they shut off before they do any damage. So sometimes they do consume oil. We stay on top of that. We make sure that they have fluids and that they're maintained, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. But sometimes we might have to have you check the oil just to make sure that something didn't happen if the generator does not want to start. There is also a secondary start switch here, which can be useful. If um, this generator, it runs on the same fuel tank as the truck does, and when it gets down to about a quarter to a third of a tank of gas, it'll starve the generator for fuel so that you wouldn't run your generator to the point where you'd run out of fuel for your truck. If you fill it back up and it still doesn't start, sometimes, and you can do this from the inside too, but sometimes if you hold it in the stop position, that red light turns on and you can hear a pump going. And what that does is it sucks fuel from the fuel tank and puts it to your generator. So that way there's no air in the line. You can also manually start it from outside here. And to stop it, you tap the stop button. So, but like I said, this is controlled from the inside. You should not have any reason to control it from the outside unless there's something weird going on. But in case something weird does go on, at least now you have some kind of idea of what is going on and what that should look like. How that all should look. Okay, so that is the outside of the motorhome. Uh, we're gonna move to the inside now. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna show people on these things in the cab here okay 
So we do have a tire pressure gauge here. You'll notice that they're all different pressures and that's fine. Um, that's pretty normal. Some of them are in the shade, some of them are in the sun. Um, so fluctuations and differences between each tire is pretty normal. Um, what you're looking for really, and typically in the summertime, is that you'll have between 70 and 80 pounds of pressure in each tire. Um, that can go down as low as uh, 60. And um, if it got into the mid 50s, then it would be time to worry about checking the tire pressure. Um, so you'll have to keep an eye on that and make sure that it is a thing that uh, doesn't get too low. If it does get into the 50s, an alarm will sound and it will uh, alert you that there is a problem. Um, these are solar charged, so most of the time you don't have to worry about charging them. Every once in a while though, this bar will get too low and it'll start beeping at you, which can be highly annoying when there's no problem other than the battery's low. And if that happens, you can pull it out of the dash and you can press and hold the negative button until it shuts off. There's also a charging port right there. So you can plug it in for a couple of minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and it's enough to charge that back up enough where the solar panel will resume charging it. So the other thing, and this is for the next part I'm gonna show you, is for the slide out. So this is your parking brake on this thing. And in order for the slide out to work on this thing, this parking brake has to be set. And I believe the engine needs to be running on this one. So when you need to set the parking brake, it's right there. The release handle for the parking brake is right here. Please be sure to release the parking brake and close the slide out before moving the motor home. The other thing this thing is equipped with right here next to the steering column is the emergency start for the generator and for the actual engine. And what this is, is if you press and hold this switch right here, it connects the battery from the motorhome to the actual truck battery. So it's like you're jump starting it. And this goes both directions. So if the coach battery is dead and you want to start the generator, you can press and hold this and you can press and hold this. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the generator that fired up. So that's also kind of handy if you're driving around and you want to start the generator, you can do it from here. Um, you can also stop the generator from here as well by hitting the stop button. So that is also kind of handy for the driver to have. Other than that, your controls are normal as can be for any kind of vehicle. Most of the time we do have an emergency jump start pack that is located inside the center console. It comes with the charger, so please maintain a charge on it if you do use it so that others can use it as well. It comes with the jumper cables that you can hook up to the, uh, to the battery. And this is the jump pack itself. Doesn't look like much, but you'll be surprised if you haven't used these before at what these things can actually start and how many times they can actually do it. If you want to check the battery level on it, you press this button here and hold it until the display lights up. You'll see that it is fully charged and ready to go. It also does come with a uh, lights, flashing lights, in case there's an emergency. This is where you would hook up the uh, the battery jump cables. And on the other side here, you'll notice that it's got the charging port for recharging the jump pack. It's got a USB output, and it's also got a USB-C input and output. So you can charge it through here with the charger or you can, uh, you can charge your phone if you have that kind of a plug-in as well. Um, I guess that's actually technically a output for the 12 volt as well. So, so that is there in case of an emergency. It's cheaper than calling roadside to service. It's a lot faster. Um, if your battery's totally dead and you try to start it, you'll notice on the back here that it's got warning codes. This number two code is a dead battery uh, fault. It's not for the jump pack, it's for the vehicle you've hooked it up to. Uh, when it is completely dead, 
you have to press and hold these two buttons together. And if you do, this ready will flash. And when that turns on, that means it's ready to jump start. You manually overridden the safety on it and it will be ready to go. Any other fault codes that come up that you see will be displayed here. And uh, this is to protect the jump pack from burning up. Um, not literally burning up, but uh, with these things, they got a lot of power going out of them. And uh, the w biggest fault on them is that they fail right here. These terminals will actually melt and uh, cause it to no longer work and be pretty worthless after that. So that's why it's got these safeties on there and why we chose these jump packs. If those jump packs are missing after the trip, um, they are about $200 a piece. Um, that would come out of the security deposit. So please make sure that they stay with the motorhomes. They are very much required to be back in here. Okay, so you'll notice the stairs come out automatically when the door to the motorhome is open. They will automatically close as well. There is an exception to this rule. And it's usually how I like to have mine set up when I'm using it. But you have this entry step light right here, and if you switch that, what happens now is instead of that going in and out every single time you open and close the door, which can be kind of annoying, it locks them out. In all theory, it'll automatically retract those steps if you start the motor home. Um, there has been at least one occasion where that has not happened, and somebody drove off and broke the steps. They're about $450 before labor. Labor takes about two hours sometimes to install, which is about $200. So we want to make sure that these retract before you take off. On that note, it is also very important that uh, before you take off with a motorhome, that you always walk around at once completely to make sure that everything is closed, such as these doors right here so the wind doesn't catch them, and flap them in the breeze and dump your gear out and break the doors. And also to make sure that the hoses and the power cables are put away so that nothing gets damaged. So, without further ado, we'll go to the inside. I've already explained this switch here. This other light right here is an entry light. And this one right here is your porch light. All the main controls for this motor home are located right here. And what you can do is you can check your tank levels. Yeah, fresh water here shows that it is full. Your gray water says it's empty. Your black tank, and I'm glad this one's misreading now so that I can explain this too. Black tanks almost always misread unless they are clean after every single use. And if you understand what that involves, you would understand why I do not clean them after every single use. Most of the time, a gray, uh, black tank will take at least over a week to fill up. Um, and the best way to check those is when you flush the toilet, simply look down the toilet. You'll see exactly how full it is and know when the proper time is to dump it. And I apologize for that, but I definitely will not be flushing the tanks after every use. Um, so, the propane tank levels, you saw that the tank outside read three quarters, but inside here, when you test it, it reads full. This is definitely the more accurate reading inside here. This is your truck battery. That it should always read full. If that starts to get low, then you definitely need to start the truck and make sure that you didn't leave the headlights on or the radio playing or something that would drain the battery. The auxiliary light, Sorry, the auxiliary battery here is currently full. This is your motorhome battery. These are both located in this compartment here. Definitely should have no reason to open this. Um, that is definitely something that should be left alone unless there's an absolute emergency and I'm on the phone with you. Um, when you use a motorhome, when these batteries get down to Anywhere between a quarter and a half is the time to recharge these batteries. 
They're not designed to go low or empty. Um, that will actually dramatically shorten the lifespan of those batteries and, um, and make, it, uh, make it so that they need to be replaced a lot sooner, if not right away. So you never wanna let them go completely empty. Um, these have two six volt batteries in them. Um, they are high ampage six volt batteries. And with this motor home, they do last quite a while. You can park for a couple of nights in a row without having to charge them typically. Um, it all depends on how much power you are consuming. So check it every once in a while. Um, when you do check it, it's important that everything is turned off in the motor home. All the lights need to be off. Everything needs to be shut down um, because all this is is a volt meter and if it's consuming power somewhere then it'll give you a false low reading. This guy right here is your water pump switch. It is currently lit up indicating that it is on. I always leave these on because if there is any kind of a leak in the motorhome you'll notice the pump run every once in a while when you are not using water. Um, if this does happen please let me know right away because that indicates that there is a leak somewhere and I would like to fix it before it becomes a big issue. The other thing you'll see here, and I'll show you how this works, is the hot water switch, okay? You'll notice that this is in the on position, and this is in the off position, it's kind of backwards. So when you flip the switch on, immediately the fault light will light up, and it takes a second, but it does go out. When that fault light is on, it just means that it is not lit. It is automatic, when it does light, it'll automatically shut off. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes and you'll have hot water. This can be left on at all times. Um, I do try to turn it off when it's driving. If uh, you know, you're driving and it blew the flame out, it would shut the gas off and it would throw a fault light and you'd simply just shut it off and restart it. So it's not a big deal either way. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off. This is your main generator on off switch to start the generator. You turn it on no big deal there it'll display your hours on the generator here you do have unlimited generator use time you can use as much as you want to recharge the batteries because I'd rather you run the generator than have dead batteries and you can shut that off right there as well the other thing you have here is the on off switch for the main battery for the sorry the auxiliary battery for the motorhome itself I always leave that on as well so that way if anything happens that, um, you know, it's just easier to leave on. So, um, inside the actual motorhome here, in the cab over, you have your TV. It is on a swivel stand, and it has a lock right here that you have to loosen up in order to open up. So you unscrew that a little bit, like so, and then do not pull on the TV because they do break, but you can grab the actual bar here and swivel the TV out. Of course, you'd want the curtain out of your way, but there you go. So that way, when you're sitting in the motorhome, you can actually watch the TV if that's what you'd like to do on your trip. Before you take off, make sure you put it back in the back position and tighten the uh, hook there so that it is secure while traveling. You have your remote and your DVD player up here. You have your cab over bed up here. In order to turn that into a bed, you simply grab this thing here and you slide it into place like so. And this creates your upper bunk. It's actually quite large and for taller people, sometimes it is better. I'm six foot four and uh, sometimes I like to sleep in the cab overs depending on the bed that's in the back because it's longer. These things are eight feet wide, eight and a half feet wide, actually. So it is better to, uh, you know, if you're tall, sometimes you might want to try these out. You have a uh, skylight here. It's a simple crank to open. It's got this mosquito screen on it to keep the bugs out. Um, you just want to make sure that these are secure before you take off because if they are open while you're driving, it has two effects. The first one is that it'll rip the vent off and fly away. Um, and they're about $100 to replace. The part itself is cheap, but there's labor involved as well. Um, the other effect that it has is it creates suction inside the motorhome. And when you create suction inside of a motorhome, the toilet is vented, which means that it'll suck 
air through the toilet tank into the camper, which means you will be smelling everything that went inside that tank. And that is an unpleasant experience. So make sure these are closed before traveling. You also have a side window here with a screen as well. Um, it does have blackout curtains on it. The cab itself has blackout curtains. They all have curtains on every single one, um, which does come in handy because we have a lot of daylight here in the summertime. The one weakness it does have is right here. Um, that does not have a curtain, which I should probably get for it. So they do make the Velcro stick on ones that, uh, can kind of be nice so i'll remember to try to get one of those um for the slide out we're going to show you how that works now um we're going to go ahead and set that parking brake like i mentioned earlier get a little push with the foot there and we'll see if i was right about it not working if the engine's not running i can't remember because some of them, some of them work one way some of them work the other your slide out switch is right here and i believe it says it's all right here ensure that the motor home is level before operating the parking brake must be set and the engine must be running to activate. So I was right. So the engine does have to run on this one. Um, the slide out is right here. It goes up against the driver's seat right here. You need to get into the habit of pulling the seat into the upright position when using the slide out. You'll notice that there is damage to the wood already. And that is from people running it onto the, uh, back side of the chair here either pulling it out or pulling it in so it's just better to pull the seat forward and have lots of space there and we'll go ahead and we'll slide that out and show you what that looks like all right well let's see if it's the opposite of what the instructions tell us let's go ahead and start the engine oh it's supposed to be started getting my wires crossed sorry about that okay engine running parking brake set i guess i just proved that the engine does need to be running so here we go we're going to slide out and that's just going to walk itself right out and you'll notice that when it stops it stops i'm still holding the switch you can't hurt it it's got shut off pressure sweat pressure sensors sorry so you don't have to worry about that. It's the same thing on the way back in. Um, if it detects pressure, it will shut itself off, but that's a switch. So that means if it hits the chair here or your luggage, or sometimes people like to put things behind the seat here and it gets caught inside the uh, thing here, it will cause damage to the motorhome and to your objects. So it's important that you do not get into the habit of storing anything in this area right here where there's a moving slide out because damage will occur. There's another point right over here where the same issue can occur. When this is slid in, it can be pretty easy to want to set something back here, but you want to avoid that because it'll get behind this uh, piece of trim here and cause damage to the trim itself, the slide out, the seals, and the wall itself. Um, again, that's very costly damage and uh, best to be avoided. So now that the slide out is out, I will go ahead and I will shut this uh, vehicle off again you will notice that the radio is still on it is important to remember to shut the radio off in most vehicles the driver's door must be opened and by doing so it shuts off the vehicle most of the time that will shut itself off automatically after about 10 or 15 minutes but it's something to keep an eye on all right so for the rest of the motorhome here you got your kitchen sink here this runs and functions just like your sink at home. Keep in mind that you have a limited tank supply and it is important to conserve water unless you have a water source nearby and you don't mind filling it up and emptying out your tank frequently. When your gray tank is full, if you didn't catch it, one of the first things that you'll notice if it overfills is that here in the shower where the drain is, you will have water coming up through the drain. If that happens, it means that you have overfilled your gray tank and it needs to be dumped right away. Um, you can dump your gray tank without dump, dumping your black tank, but you always wanna make sure there's some gray water in the system when you're dumping the black tank. 
so that you have something to flush it out with. Up above here, we have your plates and your bowls and your cups. And we have your toaster and you have your pots and pans. There are leftover coffee filters in this one, uh, which is an important thing to know. And I'm gonna take these out. Um, we do not provide coffee makers. Um, I was blamed at some point for uh, some damage that occurred because somebody left a full coffee pot on the countertop and drove off that way. Um, so I no longer provide coffee pots. Um, you're welcome to get one. You're welcome to use one. Most people wind up using a French, uh, French press uh, while they're in a motorhome. Um, it's easier, and uh, I don't drink coffee. I don't know which one's better or not, but I hear it's better. So um, you'll notice up here too that you have this uh, this fan, and uh, you can open that guy up. And this is a fantastic fan, and what that that's the name brand. Not that I'm calling it fantastic, but it kind of is. Um, it's got a setting right here that you can turn on. And this is basically a low power air conditioner. Um, when you have this on and you leave windows open, it'll suck fresh air into the camper and blow bad air out. Um, and that'll kind of help on warm sunny days if you don't want to run your generator to run the air conditioning to keep the camper cool. If you shut this while it's running, it's smart enough to know to shut off. But uh, try to remember to set this in the off position. So, um, in a pinch, you know, if you're cooking and something smokes up and you're unable to vent it using the vent fan that's located on your hood here, then you'll want to go ahead and run this fan as well, um, just to help get the smoke out of the camper before it causes smoke damage. Uh, moving on to your stove here. Um, this is your standard stove. Um, not all of them are equipped with the auto light. And uh, we'll see if we got this one stocked properly yet or not. But usually, yeah, this one doesn't have one in it, but usually we keep a, um, a lighter in here just in case this thing isn't working. Um, so when you turn this on, you strike it over, it lights up. If you ran out of propane, this may take a moment or two for the propane to get through the system and come back here. Um, this is actually something I do when I do run out of propane, is I'll turn these on first and I'll sit there and I'll light all three of them until all three of them are lit. And I know there's propane through the system again. Shut them off, you know, it's just as normal as can be with anything else, you just shut them off. Um, the uh, oven here is uh, manual pilot light only. The strikers do not work on these pilot lights, that's a safety feature. Um, in order for these to work, it's like an old style setup here. You have to set it to pilot. It says push and hold, so you press and hold this, and you would take a lighter, and you come all the way to the back here, I'm blocking my light there, sorry, to where the flame comes out right here, and you would light it. And then you'd hold it for a few moments until it lights up and is running nice and blue and steady. And then you would release the button up here, and then simply set it to whatever temperature you would like. Um, be aware that if you're cooking pizza inside these things, that they are smaller than a regular oven. And uh, you want to make sure that there's airflow around the edges of whatever you're cooking. Otherwise, it'll burn the bottom of whatever you're cooking. And uh, you'll have a big mess to worry about. Your microwave, standard microwave, nothing special about it. You have to be plugged into shore power or have the generator running for that to operate. Then it goes for the same with the air conditioning here. You must have the um, shore power hooked up or you would have to have the uh, generator running as well. Um, I guess I'll give you a little demonstration of that as well. So, well, we'll make it easy here. We'll just show you the switch upside here. So currently it's in the off position. You have a fan setting, a low fan, a high fan, low cooling, which is air conditioning, and high cooling, which is air conditioning. You'd be surprised at how hot Alaska gets sometimes. You have a super cold fading on to not as cold. I don't think that actually actually puts out any heat. That is just a uh, indicator of hot to cold or 
cold to not as cold. So that is that for you. Your refrigerator over here. Uh, this uh, fridge was new in 2021. So it functions quite nicely. You do want to try to avoid leaning things up against anything in the motorhome because things vibrate inside here and they do cause damage to occur. Um, this one is currently in the off position. Usually when you pick them up, they will be already turned on for you. I've left a temperature gauge inside here so that you can see what temperature you really have in case you're wondering. And we've got this guy here. This is the refrigerator area. It is a common misconception that this tray can be removed. If you remove this tray, what's going to happen is you're going to get condensation build up on these uh, cooling fans for, or sorry, cooling vents for the refrigerator. And this tray is for the water to drip down inside of. And then if you look closely in the back, there's a drain hole that goes out to that black tube in the back of where the, uh, the vent is for the refrigerator so that the condensation comes out of here. If you remove the uh, if you remove the tray that's in here, what happens is is all that water is going to get all over your food, and it's gross. Um, nobody likes soggy bread or soggy food that shouldn't be soggy. So um, this guy right here is the temperature sensor for the refrigerator. Um, it does display that up there. If you go through the settings to display it. Um, typically where they're set there close to the top makes for the most accurate reading in the refrigerator. The controls for their fridge are right here. You simply press the on button and get both things in, in view here. And by doing so, you'll notice that the fridge turned on and that there's a little dot next to auto and that it says that it is 58 degrees currently inside the refrigerator. So that is great. I can hear that the fridge already lit itself and is running. When it is set for auto, what that means is right now, since the battery is the only thing running, is that it's obviously using the battery to run the light, but it is using propane to actually make the refrigerator cold. This is the fastest way to make a refrigerator cold in a motorhome. It is the most efficient. And, uh, you know, if you're at a campground and you're plugged in, by all means, use the plug-in, but these are really efficient on propane. Um, there's a myth out there that these consume a ton of propane and that's that may have been true in the past, but nowadays they are extremely efficient. Um, I can run this for a week in the winter time while also running the furnace on this thing. Sorry, the furnace is over that way. But, um, and the propane typically lasts me at least a week. So it's very efficient. You don't have to worry about your propane consumption in the summertime in Alaska. If you want to manually set it, you may do so by hitting the auto slash gas button. You'll notice that that auto dot is no longer lit up. So now it'll only run on gas. You can set your temperature right here. I wouldn't recommend messing with the temperature. I've got this refrigerator set so that your freezer is cold and that your refrigerator is as cold as it can get without actually freezing your vegetables. So it should be nice the way it is. I'll go ahead and turn that off before I forget about it. And you'll notice that has shut itself off as well. So moving on, we have your linen closet right here. You'll find your sheets for the other beds here. Um, the only bed that has a fitted sheet is this bed here. Um, because it's the only one with a real mattress. Um, otherwise, these are all flat sheets. The flat sheets work with the table here, and they also work with the cab over bed here. The table bed here, I haven't really gone over that, and I probably won't show you how to do it because it's pretty straightforward. You pull the pipes out of the table and floor. You store those in the lower compartment down there so they're not rolling around, causing a trip hazard. And you simply set this table piece inside of this hole right here. And you can see that there is a ledge for that table to sit on. Um, again, I'm six foot four. This is actually six foot six. Um, it's one of the bigger kitchen tables that I have in my motorhomes. It's one of the reasons I really like these units. 
Um, that makes an actual comfortable bed um, for an adult. And you can fit two adults on there pretty comfortably. The same goes for up here. And the same goes for back here. You'll also find your extra bedding here. The pillows typically are all on the master bed in the back. Um, if they are not, then they are overflowed up on top of the uh, cab over here if you have more people than that. You'll also see that there's a blackout shade curtain here as well. And storage drawers next to the bed here. Whatever you would like to store. You'll see around here and underneath the cabinet that you have a coaxial hookup if you had a TV. You have a AC adapter that you'd normally find in a vehicle cab if you want to plug in your uh, USB chargers for your phone. If you have a uh, hookup to electric um, or the generator running, you can also hook up to this 120 volt here if you want to run a laptop or if you want to plug your phone chargers in there. Um, you'll notice over here we have an emergency exit. It's a regular window as well, but you can also pull these emergency handles here and there and push the window out on a hinge and climb out if there's an emergency. You also have overhead cab storage here that you can use for clothing or whatever else you would like. Down below here, you have your electrical panel. Um, I'll go ahead and open that so you can see what's inside there. And inside here, you'll see your breakers in case you trip a breaker, that you can reset your breakers here. You also have your fuses. If a fuse goes bad, and this is kind of weird, but I love it, if you unplug these, I guess that won't work, but if these are actually plugged in and they go bad, What'll happen is a red light will light up on the side here to tell you that, hey, this is bad, and it's not conducting electricity properly. Um, sorry, I'm not in frame there. Red light's right here on the side, and you can see that through the panel here, through this little panel right here. So if you suspect a fuse is bad, and there's no light lit up here, then that's definitely not the problem. And you can search elsewhere for the problem. We'll get that guy plugged back in here. I think I might have discovered that that one's a little damaged and I need to replace that. Yep, all right. Well, that needs to get replaced, so I'll get to replacing that after this video. All right, over here we have your main, uh, sorry, I'm in the frame there. Right here we have your uh, main wardrobe. You can... Open that up, you'll find your broom and dust pans inside here. This one does have some coat hangers in it. A lot of times we don't put coat hangers in here because they make a terrible racket going down the dry, or sorry, down the road. And uh, tends to bother more people than not having them to begin with. Um, I should mention that this floor in here is extremely weak. Um, it's very tempting to put large heavy objects inside here because it's the biggest compartment inside the motorhome. But uh, doing so, will result in breaking the little supports that they have for the floor in here. And um, it just causes unnecessary damage. Down below here, you got your main slide out drawer. You can store stuff inside there. Outside here, you have your uh, vanity mirror. In order to open that, it says push gently then pull. It's referring to pushing this way and then gently pulling this way. You'll find your little hand towels there and whatever else you'd like to store in there, as well as a hand towel down here. Again, another regular faucet with nothing fancy about it. Um, you got your electrical outlet here. You do have a lavatory light switch there for those guys up there. You also happen to have another water pump switch right here. Um, that's if you want to shut them off all the time, then, uh, you know, it's conveniently located close to where you use most of your water. Uh, this guy here is kind of important. Um, this is your thermostat for the heater. This is your on-off switch for that. It is currently in the off position. 
it's a very stiff switch. You'll hear it when I click it. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the click. And then in order to set the temperature on it, there's a slider on the bottom right there that you just slide over. And you'll hear the furnace right here turn on. That is where the furnace is located. But the vents for the furnace are here. There are these little round ones. That is also where they come out. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's one right there in the bathroom as well. Um, when you go to shut this off, the furnace is still going to run for a few minutes to go through a cool down cycle, despite whether it's hot or not. And that is normal. In the bathroom here, we have your standard foot flush toilet. I'll show you that in here. Sorry, that is uh, not what you think it is. That's uh, leftover cleaner that never got flushed down the toilet. So. I have to talk to my cleaner about that one, but you'll see that it uh, has water in the bowl. You always want to maintain water in the bowl. <coughs> Sorry, my mouth is getting a little dry there. And what that does is it creates a seal, and that seal will prevent any odors from coming up through the toilet into the camper itself. So that is something you always want to make sure there's some water left in there. There's also a spray wand here, which is kind of handy. To help things go down, you can pull the flush and spray the toilet down. Make sure everything gets rinsed down into the toilet. Um, if you can find RV toilet paper, please use RV toilet paper. It helps prevent these toilets from clogging. Also, please only use toilet products in here. Any sanitary products, please throw in the trash. Um, they will clog up the system, and that is not a fun job. You'll also find in here the uh, another sky vent. Um, it's the same as the other one with the added addition of it having a uh, blower fan on here to uh, help keep things uh, ventilated if you need it. Um, inside the shower here, it's your standard shower, kind of like the outdoor shower there. It's got that on off shut off valve there as well as the faucet control. Sorry, I'm out of frame again. The little faucet controls here and here. A um, little place to hold your soap, stuff like that. Have your bath towels all here. When you're done with your trip, if you could put all your used bedding and towels inside the shower area that need to be cleaned. Um, we wash all bedding and all towels every single trip, regardless of whether or not they were used, um, just to maintain um, cleanliness, mostly. Um, and I believe... Sorry for spinning with the camera. I know that's a taboo, but um, that is the camper. These are the Tioga Ranger 25Gs. Um, those are RV number seven and RV number eight. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. If you have any questions after watching this video, um, feel free to contact me and ask ahead of time um, or after you're inside the motorhome and come across something, feel free to contact me anytime to ask. Um, you should have my contact number by now and uh, be more than happy to talk to you about things. Thank you.